This is Dwayne at RealFixesRealFast.com. We're working on a 94 Ford F-150 two-wheel drive and we've got a bad lower ball joint. Let me show you the procedure to change that. You grab the tire by the top and bottom and shake it and you're going to feel some play in there. Now when you come down and look at the lower ball joint you look real close, you'll see some movement in that lower ball joint. That's excessive play and shouldn't be there. First thing we do is take the wheel off. Got to take the caliper off. Now you can pull the caliper out where you can get a little better access to it. And there's various ways of compressing the piston on the caliper. The important thing here though is you shouldn't let that caliper just hang free. You can use a bungee cord or a strap or something like this. It's okay for the caliper to hang but it shouldn't put undue stress on that brake line. Pop the pads out. Now by using that pry tool that we had to start with there, we've actually pressed the piston back on the caliper so we can get that out. The ball joint's held on with a cotter pin that goes through the castle nut. You've got to get that cotter pin out of there. Personally, I like these really long pliers. It gives you a good handle to get a hold of the pry on. Now we're using an impact to loosen up this top bolt. You can do it just with a ratchet if you don't have an impact. There's a little wedge down in here that we have to get out. Some of these are concentric and need to be right in the same place so we just take the little grinder and put a little mark right on there. We're actually going to line up the slot with the mark. Now we need to take the tie rod end off. It has the same principle where there's a cotter key held on to that castle nut. You just smack on that outer part with a steel hammer real hard. Once you take the castle nut off, it's just the bevel part that is holding it in place. Same procedure with the lower ball joint. Take the cotter pin out and the castle nut off. Now here's just a little tip. Before you take that castle nut off completely, leave it on just a couple threads so when you break this loose it won't just fall all the way to the ground. Pull the top pin out. You can usually take your chisel and you've got to take this top piece off. Just slide it in there and hammer it. That's the eccentric for the alignment. Now we've come around to the side, we're ready to take the lower ball joint off. It's held on with the same type of bevel. So you can see we're going to demonstrate here why you leave the threads on. Because we're going to hit that with a hammer real hard and it's just going to drop. And if that threads aren't holding that castle nut on, it could just drop on the floor or your foot. So be sure and leave that on. Just take you a good big hammer. Now, 
You can see why that held that in place. Now we're ready to take the castle nut out and remove it. Now we've got our knuckle moved over here to the bench and we've got to take this little ring off with your snap ring pliers. Now if you've never done these before, it's your first time, just play close attention right here. We've got the bevel, this is the bottom ball joint compared to the top. It's just a post up there. It doesn't have the bevel. Now we just showed you one method where you can use your air chisel and try and push it out this way. Sometimes that works real well as you can just see. Other times it won't. You'll push and push and push and it won't work and you may have to use a press. But this method is much simpler and faster. Now take yourself a little piece of emery cloth and clean out the inside. Just kind of buff it. You don't have to really sand and grind on it. Just smooth it out. Take off any burrs that might be there. Now the new ball joint is going to come with a new boot, a new castle nut, a new snap ring, and a new greaser. Always look it over make sure that it's the same piece. Now if you have one of these ball joint installer kits you can use it. Sometimes your parts store may actually rent it to you. Now we'll show you how to put this together. You put your C-clamp together. As you can tell by this kit there's several options of pieces that you can use. But the point here what we have to do is you have to put this ball joint in place and then we've got to press it in there without damaging the ball joint. So you'll need to come up with a combination that works. You need a spacer and then the flange that goes on the end. You can see the ball joint has to come up into this recess so your spacer has to go allow that and it has to be wide enough to still let the ball joint travel. If it's in there too tight then your ball joint won't be able to travel up into the space that it needs to. And then you put a flange on here. The purpose of this flange is to have something solid that your C-clamp will hook onto. And you can slip your C-clamp in place. And then we're ready to turn it down. Just tighten that down until everything is good and snug with just your ratchet. Once you get it snug, you're going to need to switch to an impact. Half inch impact. Make sure at this point that you're in, everything's lined up and not going to smash anything. And then you're ready to apply the pressure from your impact. And we're going to try to drive that ball joint up in place. Now how do you know that you're actually in tight and far enough? Well the first thing is the impact will stop moving, but take your spacers off and then you can look at the ball joint. Now the important thing to look at is on this side, you can see the notch where your snap ring has to go. If that notch is not far enough for your snap ring to fit, you'll have to actually press it on a little bit more. But all you need is enough for your snap ring to go in place. Now the next thing we need to do is take the rubber boot and slide it over the ball joint. Now when you get your rubber boot in place, make sure that the little notch for the grease is actually pointing, in this case, upward. But if you look at the knuckle, that would be inward when you actually mount the vehicle, mount it on the vehicle. The next thing to do is take the greaser and screw it into the bottom of the ball joint. Take the same piece of emery cloth and just try and clean out the inside diameter just a little bit, dress it up. 
Now take the knuckle and slide it in and put your top post in first. Once you get it in place, then you can put in your beveled one at the bottom and then slide your castle nut on, screw it down a few threads and that'll hold it in place. It's always a good idea to clean off the surfaces that are going to go together. Emery cloth is good for that. Now we're going to put the top eccentric in. Some of the aftermarket eccentrics do not have this tab and you can turn this to get a caster camber change. In this case it has a factory tab on here that lines up with this groove. So in this case it's not one that's going to be easily put in wrong. Drive that top eccentric down just as far as it'll go, and then tighten up your lower castle nut. It's tight now. Once you get it tight, you look for where the alignment pin is, and you finish tightening it until you can get the cotter pin in it. So turn your castle nut until the hole for the cotter pin lines up. Slide your bolt in. Now we're ready to put the tie rod back in. If the tie rod were bad or the boot were bad, you could change all that now. Ours happens to be good, so we're just going to reinstall it. Okay, now turn it until where it's really good and snug and the hole lines up with the slot in your castle nut. So we've got the ball joint all repaired. Next thing is just put the brakes together. We're going to change the brake pads, put new pads on, and you're done.